After Sonic Frontiers, the consensus was that Sonic Team, despite facing some unfortunate development issues, managed to create a good Sonic game with a foundation that had the potential to blossom into something much greater with more refinement over time. The next 3D Sonic game was bound to have many people interested. Would Sega and Sonic Team fuck this up? Was Sonic Frontiers a fleeting glimpse of something greater that would never be followed up on? We now have our answer. One of the most anticipated Sonic games ever has finally been released. Sonic X Shadow Generations is a remaster of the original 2011 anniversary title, but this time with an added campaign featuring the ever so popular Shadow the Hedgehog. Sega and Sonic Team enthusiastically promoted the Shadow campaign, promising great gameplay and more development of a character that hadn't seen much screen time in over a decade. Sonic Team actively listened to feedback and made changes that many fans got behind. They even brought a ton of artists and notable names in the community to make art and talk about what Shadow the Hedgehog as a character meant to them. It was an honest attempt at sincerely letting the fans know that they are serious about telling more stories within Sonic's world, and like many of us, they themselves are passionate about creating something that we can all enjoy and properly become invested in. It's all led to this moment. Now, if you'll allow me, I'd like to dive right into Shadow Generations. After having visions of Black Doom returning somewhere on the space colony arc, Shadow arrives to eliminate the threat. While on board, he encounters Black Doom and absorbs some of Doom's powers through the familiar symbol Doom leaves behind. Shadow finds the fake yellow Emerald Tails created in SA2 and is sent to White Space after the Time Eater appears in Sonic's story. In White Space, Shadow encounters Sonic in a losing battle where the Blue Hedgehog takes the fake yellow Emerald. Rouge, who made him promise to go to Sonic's birthday party in the first place, as well as Maria and Gerald Robotnik. At first, Shadow does his best to keep his mind on the mission. His usual bravado is on display, even as Gerald reveals that Black Doom wants to eventually take over Shadow's body to use as his own. After Shadow defeats Black Doom, he gives Rouge the real yellow emerald to swap for the fake one that Sonic has. Gerald and Maria begin to return to their own time leaving Shadow a panicking mess who tries to reverse this, but Maria tells Shadow that even if they may not be together physically, she'll always be in his heart. Shadow takes one last look at the Professor and Maria before turning and speeding past Rouge, shedding a tear as the two head off to help Sonic defeat the Time Eater. The way Shadow almost completely crumbles by the end really showed how even by this point after attempting to move on, it isn't that easy to just continue on and carry all that emotional weight with you. Throughout the story, every time you complete his own, talking to Maria and Gerald reveals more about Shadow's mindset in the moment. Maria consistently reaffirms Shadow, even at one point telling him why she gave him that name in the first place, while Gerald tells Shadow to not tell them anything despite it seeming like he desperately wants to. This moment when Shadow says wait, and takes one very long last look at Gerald and Maria got to me. I found myself wanting Shadow to just spill his guts in this emotionally resolute scene. There was a running theme of not giving into hatred. Black Doom wants Shadow to give into his anger. Shadow fights this anger throughout the game, almost letting it out through his new powers he acquired on Sonic. The vengeful anger that still lingers in Shadow is what Doom needs to eventually take over Shadow's body. But Maria is there to pull him out, and Rouge herself offers emotional support. Maria, reminding Shadow that he is the way to the light, pushes him to let go of his anger. His only motivation now is to give everyone on the earth a chance to be happy by protecting them from danger. He chose to do this. It's his promise to Maria, and through this promise, Shadow can show the way of the light to everyone else. I want to let it be known that the two times Shadow sees the light and frees himself from hatred, he sheds a tear. Honestly, despite how bittersweet the ending felt at the time I first witnessed it, at the end of the day, Shadow moves on with a better perspective, a clearer version of who he is and what he's meant to do. The memories will always be there, but that's not a bad thing. It ended up being the emotionally resolute scene I wanted, but executed well and in a way that fits Shadow's character much more than my spur of the moment wish for Shadow to just say anything before leaving. It's a really good story. My only complaint is that you must consistently keep tabs on potential new dialogue unlocks after completing every level, and in the groove of the gameplay loop, it's very easy to not do this. This is my exact same problem with Sonic Frontiers' handling of Sage. You miss a lot of dialogue to help shape the characters as well as give good supplementary information that furthers the plot. Maria and Gerald should have had more cutscenes either talking to each other about their predicament or talking to Shadow more. A lot of what Maria says conveys to the player what Shadow's state of mind is and I wish it was more explicitly shown rather than be something you can easily miss. Feels like it robs some later cutscenes of their emotional punch. I've seen a few people lament the fact that they missed out on one or two interactions because they were wrapped up in the gameplay loop. Speaking of other characters, E123 Omega, Orbot and Cubot, and Big the Cat is here? 
Omega has some funny lines about Shadow being able to turn his hand into a gun, and upon first meeting Big, Shadow cracks a smile, which I found interesting. Big's dialogue even suggests that Shadow engages in a bit of back and forth about whether Big is actually catching the right frog every time or not. Orbot and Cubot need help building a ship with parts you can collect around the hub world. I'm sure this mini mission for Eggman's two robots leads to some neat little easter egg, while Big and Omega are around to provide some sort of comedic relief with their nonsensical dialogue, but that's all they got. It's cool seeing Shadow interact with characters you wouldn't often think about, but there isn't much meat on the bones here, but the overall plot is good. I've already read tons of threads and posts breaking down the story, as well as some general reactions to how the story made other people feel. Ian Flynn did a better job here than Frontiers in my opinion, even with the same nagging issue. It feels tighter, more concise compared to the failed attempt at a grandiose story that didn't quite stick the landing in Frontiers. Seeing him write a well written shadow story really should put to bed some of the more nitpicky slights people have against his writing. He isn't a masterful writer with zero flaws, but he's able to write these characters and stories well enough when given the proper guidance. I hope Ian and whoever else helps write the stories can improve on pacing while keeping the consistent characterization going. I'm locked in for whatever is next. Quick side note. I thought the use of Mephilus was interesting. They pretty much confirmed that Shadow doesn't remember the events of Sonic 06, and Mephilus being mad about Shadow forgetting who he was again was pretty funny. Mephilus wanting to exist again but being unable to due to being trapped in a dead timeline is deservedly tragic, but I'm not sure if his inclusion here and his desperate need to exist once again either proves or disproves the theory that the Time Eater is a primordial version of Mephilus. But some things don't need to be fully explained. I made a short video talking about this theory if anyone wants to know more. Infinite not appearing was also interesting, but I'm glad he didn't, cause Infinite kinda stinks. To the surprise of hopefully no one, a modern Sonic game looks great and has excellent music tracks to back it up. Shadow Generations is a step up visually from Sonic Frontiers, and I already think that game looks beautiful in the rare moments the screen is clogged with a bunch of random obstacles floating around. Seeing white space in a 3D setting kinda made me mad that the original generations didn't do something similar in the first place. It's not like they haven't had sonic boost controls in the 3D hub world before, they did it with Unleashed. But regardless of that, my main compliment with white space and shadow generations is that the obstacles are mostly built into the architecture of the buildings, with a few rails and floating platforms, and places to use the different Doom abilities here and there. When Sonic Frontiers was making its rounds with gameplay showcases and trailers, I was one of the people who adamantly defended the open world platforming obstacles looking so out of place compared to the general aesthetic theme of every island. Playing the third update of Frontiers made me realize how dumb that was because the game looks so good, but the platforming sections just being thrown about everywhere looks like vomit. The dev team for this game made sure to blend the platforming well within the context of White Space's hub world, and in turn, it creates a great looking hub world full of goodies to find. The actual stages are beautiful, Kingdom Valley is by far my favorite for multiple reasons and one of them is because it's just a beautiful looking stage. My eyes were wide as I traveled through the split waterfall section, taking in all the ways Sonic Team found to reinvent the look of the stage. I appreciate the new age spin they put on a lot of levels like the Space Colony Arc and Rail Canyon. I even enjoyed retreading the recent levels like Sunset Heights with its better lighting and impressive looking water reflections. The dev team that worked on this game is comprised of a group within Sonic Team who worked on the Sonic and Mario Olympic games and new developers not familiar with Sonic. It's great to see that Sega is allowing Sonic Team to put their trust into new developers who can either bring new ideas to the table or help iron out the kinks of what was previously laid out. Shadow Generations from the looks department is well made because of it. I haven't even talked about how great the cutscenes look. None of that weird cinematic shit from Forces is here. These cutscenes are in full screen and the characters are well animated. Shadow in particular was very expressive in a way that was nowhere near as awkward as the expressions in Sonic Frontiers were. Marie and Gerald look great, and there's a general fluidity to the movement in these cutscenes that I just love. They're dynamic, full of great shots and action that's fun to watch. I appreciate how they scaled back on the spectacle for boss fights. I enjoyed the primetime heavyweight showdowns in Frontiers, but to me the immersion of the shadow boss fights was handled much better. The music in this game is superb. The remix music for every stage sounds great. Some of my favorite tracks were Kingdom Valley and the Radical Highway remix that could be heard when traveling through the Black Doom section of certain stages. The final piece of music that plays during the final scene of the game is great stuff. Jun Sano is the lead sound director for the game and along with him are a myriad of different artists who did a damn good job with the soundtrack. I can easily say that I'll find myself coming back to this incredible OSD for a long time. The gameplay is what I've been personally waiting for the most. Even with people saying the game felt good based on demos they played at game expos, I still needed to feel it in my hands before I was ready to say anything positive or negative about it. 
Starting with the bass controls, Shackle feels so smooth. I like that he's more slippery than Sonic, whose controls were more precise in Frontiers. It makes sense since Shadow is skating around with hover shoes. Shadow feels so fluid in both 3D hub stages as well as in 2D stages. I've been so ready for Sonic Team to move on from 2D stages and 3D Sonic for a long time, but I can safely say that Shadow Generations has some of the very best 2D sections in Sonic since Unleashed. In fact, Shadow Generations personally gave me a lot of Unleashed vibes. The gameplay loop is damn near the same. It's literally like if Sonic Unleashed didn't have the Werehog. I know someone is going to mention Sonic Colors on the Wii, and while you're not wrong, Sonic Colors on the Wii kinda sucks. Anyway, the 2D sections are a lot of fun and don't feel awkward to control at all. This is a major step up from Sonic Frontiers' whack ass 2D stages full stop. The 3D stages are incredible. Levels feature multiple pathways that guarantee your trips back into the stages won't always be the exact same. There's a good sense of speed and platforming that doesn't feel too easy nor does it feel impossibly hard. The difficulty obviously elevates as the story goes on, but I found myself having so much fun in the 3D stages. The only time I was approaching anything resembling mad was when I was playing the 2D stages. In these stages, Shadow can use his Chaos Control ability to freeze time, allowing the player to use obstacles to create new shortcuts or find areas that send Shadow flying through the stage at great speed. I didn't have much use for the CC ability during my playthrough. I only ever really used it when shortcuts are obvious to me and whenever the game suggests that I use it. In the hub world, Shadow's boost is nerf and you can't fly across the map after jumping off a rail at the right angle like you can in Frontiers. I understand why some people won't like this because Sonic Frontiers was so busy laying out the future of the franchise that it ended up being one of the most freeing games to play for fans who just wanted to fly around the map at supersonic speeds. I like that this was scaled back. I don't know if this is going to be a hot take, but I feel like there's a good bit of Sonic fans out there who think being able to fly over all the level design means gameplay good. While I found it hilarious how broken mobility was in Frontiers, it needed to be nerfed. Sonic is about high speed platforming meant to test the reflexes and chain together moves to keep the speed going. I like that a lot of the collectibles in white space are tied to platforming challenges. No puzzles to solve, just straight running, jumping, and rail grinding with the use of Shadow's newfound Doom abilities such as growing wings and flying, creating a surfboard, and becoming this squid looking thing able to traverse through purple muck. I like these abilities and the few levels and challenges built around them. One of my favorite levels in the entire game was one of the final Radical Highway inspired levels where you spent most of it flying through the stage. The Metal Overlord boss being built around using the surfboard to deal damage is fucking sick, and easily my favorite boss in the entire game. The Doom Morph ability is a little awkward to handle, but it's cool once you get the hang of it. It's using the final boss is a little too much for me though. There are two other Doom abilities called the Doom Blast, which allows you to launch a Doom enemy into the air and aim your final blow to send them somewhere you can then teleport to. This ability rules and led to some moments where I used the ability as a shortcut. Doom Spears give you the ability to launch multiple Chaos Spears at once, which seems heavily inspired by the mech gameplay of SA1 and 2. You gain these abilities by completing stages in a similar fashion to the Generations gameplay loop. You play two acts, one in 3D and the other in 2D. Once you complete these stages, more color is restored to the white space, opening new areas for Shadow to explore. Once you find the boss gate, you must play through six short challenge levels to collect three keys. Once you have three keys, you return to the boss gate and fight the boss which gives you the symbol that I forgot the name of, so I'm just gonna call it the Doom Coin. With this Doom Coin, you go to a statue to gain a new power. It sounds a little exhausting having to do six extra challenge levels to gain three keys when in Sonic Generations you only need to do one, but Shadow Generations felt like a shorter game, so I'm not mad at it. It helps that a lot of the challenge levels don't even take two minutes to complete, so I found myself breezing through the game at some point before I was suddenly at the final zone. I personally would have loved to see more stages here. White Jungle from SA2 or Final Haunt from Shadow 1 would have been great additions, and I would have loved to see how modern Sonic Team reimagines those stages. I'm not sure if they'll do what they did for Frontiers and add more stage content, but if they do, I hope we get more variety because while I did enjoy the game, the Radical Highway aesthetic was a little tiring to see by the end. Before I forget, the camera in this game stinks. I don't understand this new thing Sonic Team does where I can't just rotate the camera at times where I feel like it would be beneficial in a few situations in 3D stages. This fixed camera that always follows right behind the player sucks, and I wish Sonic Team would experiment with letting the player move the camera around in stages. I get that they want to keep the boost, but in moments when you slow down, a free camera would be so helpful. You're gonna hear this a lot, so allow me to be one of the millions echoing this opinion. Shadow Generations is a great step in the right direction. From beginning to end, it's a fun game with a good story, fantastic level design, and most importantly, great gameplay that built upon the foundation of Sonic Frontiers, and rather than doing radical changes to the formula, 
Sonic Team simply refined it, and honestly, that's what I wanted, so I'm happy. There are still a few issues in terms of story pacing and camera during gameplay, but shit, Sonic Team has proven to listen to feedback that resulted in two good 3D Sonic games back to back. We should continue to be critical, but also trust that Sonic Team will deliver because so far in this new era, they're two for two. Shadow Generations is a game I hope paves the way for other Sonic characters outside of Team Sonic to be featured in the upcoming games. Shadow has come out of this with a more defined character. I don't need every Sonic character to get a great deal of development, but man, I'd love to see characters like Silver Blaze or Cream get some shine in the future games, make the world around Sonic feel alive, and it looks like we're on the track to getting there. Shadow Generations is a great game, I highly recommend it as a video game for anyone to play full stop, it's well worth the time. The Sonic Team is approaching another level right before our eyes. To any and everyone who's played this game, what do you think about Shadow Generations? Leave a comment below, I'd love to read more about what other people think of this game. Shout out to you for watching, stick around the channel if you like Sonic stuff. I got videos about Sonic lore, character discussions, and reviews of other Sonic games if you're fucking with this. That's all I got for now, see ya.